Hello beautiful humans and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Taryn and I love to talk about books. So today we are going through all of the series that I want to finish in 2023. One of my goals is to finish any series that I've started. So I went through everything. I wrote down all of the series that I need to finish and what books I need to read in order to finish them so that I can cross them off as I go. And we're just gonna talk about them today, I guess. I will try to be more descriptive today. I know that I have an issue with just like not telling you anything about the book. I'm working on it, okay? And I'm still drinking coffee, so like it might get better as the video goes or it might get worse. Mm. Let's start. These are romance series, fantasy series, YA series. Like it's just a mod podge of types of series. So there's really no rhyme or reason in the way that I'm gonna go. I just felt like I should tell you that. So first we have the, I wonder what this like series is called. I think this is like the Clarksons series. That's their last name. I'll put it on the screen if I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. But this one is Too Hot to Handle by Tessa Bailey. I already read this one. I tabbed it. I liked it. I gave it like a 3.75 or a 4 star. It was just like a cute little read. The girl's family is going on a road trip to fulfill one of her mom's wish list items after she passed. And when they stopped in their first little town that they stopped at the sister fell in love and now there's three other siblings that will stop along the way and i'm guessing fall in love as well so yeah i have three more in this one it is oh oh my god it literally says it right here i read this i read this entire page and it's the first one it is the romancing the clarksons series uh so this one was to what too Hot to Handle, There is Too Wild to Tame, Too Hard to Forget, and Too Beautiful to Break. There's also a novella in there, but I'm not counting novellas towards this whole little thing. Sorry. All right, another series, and this one I have not even started, but I have to read it this year because it's part of my 12 challenge, which is the whole one book a month recommended by 12 friends. 12 friends recommended one book for me to read over the 12 over the next 12 months anyway I was recommended Broken Bonds it is the Bonds That Tie series I really I don't know anything about this one and I do apologize I can read the back for you if you want me to read the back if you don't want me to read the back skip a few seconds okay after the death of my mother and her bonded I was relieved to find my own bonds I was sure everything would be okay if I had them it wasn't the fate of our people is in my hands and I know we're better off if I'm alone after five years on the run I'm caught and dragged back to face the men I ran away from I thought I was doing the right thing and now I'm not so sure North Knox Griffin Atlas and Gabe may never forget mm -mm. what North Knox, Griffin, Atlas, and Gabe may never forgive me, but one thing is for sure, I won't ever forgive myself. So no one is forgiving her. It's what I just got from that. Yeah, I'm excited. There's like a bajillion books in this series that I did not realize. I think there's like six books, but they're short. They seem like they're easy reads. Like, I don't know. I'll let you know after I read the first one. I always sit on the floor for these. It's because I have literally nowhere else to film. Next we have the Red Zone Rivals Trilogy. It's only three books so far. I read them out of order. So Fair Catch is actually the first one. This is a, well, all three of them are football romances, so sports romance. Second one, what is that? Blindside, right here. That one is fake dating trope. This one is, I want to say it's like friends to lovers. Maybe it's enemies to lovers. I really don't know. Um, but I do know because I read Blindside that the girl is the kicker on the football team. And like the guy that she's, that she falls in love with is another person on the, is another guy on the team. So I feel like there's probably, and it says they're roommates. But I feel like it's one of those like, he doesn't really like her. I don't know. I, I really... I don't know, but I do know it's a sports romance. It's football and they're roommates. 
And then there's also quarterback sneak, which is where he falls for the new coach's daughter, the off limits daughter. Next, we have the Magnolia Parks universe. There is three going on four books. I don't know that the fourth one is out. It might be. This is toxic rich people romance is what I've heard and that's really all that I know but this is another of my 12 challenge books so like I have to read it meaning I have to finish the series. Next we have the Ravenhood series which this one is going to be hard for me. This is toxic secrets, toxic men, Really, when you read this first book, you don't know anything. You are as lost as the FMC. Like, you're just completely confused the entire time. And I think that's why I hate it, because I hate being confused. So, I guess I'm going to keep reading. I already spoiled the second one for myself, because I didn't want to continue reading. So, if I get, like, 25% into the next one, which is... Exodus, if I get 25% into that one and I don't like it, I'm just going to DNF it. I'm not really going to worry about that. This is not the year to read books that we don't like. You know what I mean? So we'll see. That's another one that I need to finish, okay? I read Promises and Pomegranates this month and this opens a whole new series for me to finish. This is the Monsters and Muses series. It's a mafia romance. I liked it. I gave it three and a half stars. It was a super easy read so I'm excited to continue reading and I think the other um, other books in the series are just other people that we've been introduced to in this book and their love lives. I am including this one even though it's a duet so I don't know if it's like if you would call it a series but I do. Um, the Confidence or what is this? The Wildflower Duet. It's a romance and that's all that I know. Oh, 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 oh. It's a romance. It's an age gap and it's Grumpy Sunshine. Those are the three things that I know about this book and I know that half of the world loves it, half the world hates it. That's what I know about this book. Do you want me to read the back? I can read the back. Okay. My future is a... I can't read the back. <laughs> My future is a big what if at the moment and I'm fine with that for the most part. When Thayer Holmes moves in next door, the grumpy landscaper both fascinates and amuses me. When he asks me to nanny his kid, it's a great way to make some extra money. Oh, it's a nanny romance too? It's impossible not to fall in love with Thayer and his adorable son. There's a big problem though. I'm 18, he's 31. Falling for someone almost 15 years older than me wasn't part of my plans, but sometimes things happen when you least expect them. So that's this one. I don't know what the second one is about and I'm not going to read the back of it and spoil anything. So here we go. This next one, I read this month and I absolutely love this month. I read The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. This was a 12 challenge recommended to me by one of my friends and I absolutely loved it. This was my first Abby Jimenez book and the banter was top tier. Top freaking tier. This is about, it's like a friends to lovers romance. We have Kristen and Josh. Josh is Kristen's best friend's husband's best friend. Hope that made sense. And you know, they just kind of like fall in love a little bit. And this isn't spoiling it, I promise. It says it on the back of the book, so I'm gonna say that. Josh really, 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 really wants a big family, wants a lot of kids, okay? Kristen cannot have those children she has ovarian issues so she is very stubborn the entire book obviously like she doesn't want Josh to give up his whole I want to be a dad thing you just get to like kind of see how they navigate that whole thing um there is two more books in this series and I am very freaking excited I heard the second one the happy ever after playlist is even better than this one and I'm so excited. That actually comes in tomorrow. I ordered it on Amazon and I have the third one already somewhere in here. 
the bromance book club series i only have two more books in the series this is about a book club for a bunch of dudes that are really bad at relationships and read books to figure out how to navigate their relationships i guess so like this first one is about a baseball player and his wife and they're having some struggles some stupid stupid struggles they're fighting over the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard in my entire life and if you've read this then you understand that is why i think i give this like a three star because i hated the reason that they were fighting it was absolutely Oh my god anyway the other books in the series get a lot better but i'm just talking about this one for now they're having marriage issues so the guy is brought into his friend's book club which is again just a bunch of guys and they give him a book to read to help him navigate why he's such an idiot and how to fix his marriage pretty good it is written in third person i feel like you should know that i don't know why the truly devious series by maureen johnson this series y'all um it gives me very dark academia vibes i wasn't the biggest fan of the first one but the second one was amazing and now i cannot wait to continue reading so this is about stevie bell who was accepted into this elite school where only like a couple of um kids are accepted a year he goes to the school to it's kind of like a murder mystery i guess she's accepted to the school because she has like a vast knowledge of the murder that happened at the school like a long long time ago and she's trying to uncover kind of the case because she doesn't believe who was accused she doesn't think that they actually did it so she came to the school to then figure it out but while she's there other deaths happen and then she is kind of thrown into trying to figure out who is now involved in those murders i don't think i could have explained that worse i highly recommend i like these so i'm excited to continue reading okay we have the miles high club series i talked about this in one of my other things this is about the Miles Brothers, there's four of them. So there is four books all surrounding their love lives. They're like CEOs of this company. The first one was all right. I gave it like three and a half stars. The characters were just so stubborn and I swear to God, they fought every single chapter. But the second one is about who I think is going to be my favorite brother. So I'm excited to continue reading. I don't really know what else to say about that one. Okay, I don't have the first in this book right now because I gave it to my boss to read and I don't know if she's ready yet, but that's fine. I need to finish the off-campus series. I have read every single book except for the last one because I just don't want it to end, but I need to finish it. So I have The Legacy Left, which is, I believe, about all four couples that were in the previous four books. And it's just kind of like an extended epilogue for each couple. Some people said it was so cute and like wrapped everything up in a perfect little bow. Other people said that they absolutely hated it. So that's kind of why I've been putting off because I don't want to hate it because I love the off campus series so much, which is hockey romance. They all have different tropes, but the deal, the first one is fake dating and it is so cute. Uh, I loved it so much. If you have read Icebreaker by Hannah Grace, I highly recommend you also read The Deal by Elle Kennedy. Yeah, hockey romance, fake dating, grumpy sunshine super cute it's college romance yeah so this is just all of them combined though all the books in the series combined so i need to finish that one okay next we have the dreamland billionaires series i started this last year this is the fine print the second one is terms and conditions and then final offer so i have those last two the series is about the three brothers that are now owners of like a disneyland disney world type thing i mean you can see the castle this one was so like okay start over their grandfather who was the owner of this dreamland he passed and in order for the three grandsons to get their inheritance however you want to say that they 
Wow, did you hear my hip? That was fabulous. The three grandsons have to like do certain things. Their grandfather left them like notes. So in this one, Rowan had to, he had to create something and it be passed by the board for him to get his money. And like, um, I think another brother has to get married and another brother has to have an heir, like has to have a kid. It's by Lauren Asher and Lauren Asher writes really well. Quick, easy, fun fun time. All right, I also need to finish the Shatter Me series by Tahera Mafi. I'm so sorry. I read the first three books in the series and I loved the first three books in the series and then I just stopped reading them and I could not possibly tell you why. I'm not reading any of the novellas. I will say that now. I just don't see a point in reading them and I'm sorry and I certainly don't want to read something from Adam's point of view let me tell you this is about Juliet who was born with the condition where if she touches someone they die she like takes their energy from them so they die so she was locked away for a really long time because her parents were like Oh my god that's absolutely terrible so she was locked away and told that she was just the worst human imaginable until one day she is taken out of captivity and starts to learn more about her powers and learns that she has a lot more i don't know how to like explain this without saying everything the growth that you see from this book to then the following books like because this is like it's all told from juliet's point of view is so good it's so good because she's learning to like that she's not a terrible human and that her powers can be used for good. I don't. It's really good. I promise it's really good even though my description was probably terrible. Next we have Guild and Olivia Reads a Latte here on YouTube said that this was like Akatar but with more of a slow burn and I automatically bought it. <laughs> Gosh, why am I like this? Okay, I'm gonna read the back of this one because I really, I, she literally said it was like Akatar but slower burn and I just bought it. So I, I really don't know what it's about, okay? I'm just gonna read the little piece down here. The myth of King Midas reimagined shows the dark side of greed through the eyes of the woman he gold touched. This compelling adult fantasy series is as addictive as it is unexpected. With romance, intrigue, and danger, the gilded world of Aurea. Aurea will grip you from the very first page. So it's the Plated Prisoner series, by the way. I didn't say that, but I'm so excited. We have Kingdom of the Wicked next by Carrie Manoscalco. I've had this on my TBR for the longest time, but two of my book besties just finished this entire series. Actually, I just think it's a trilogy and they said it was so freaking good. I want to say it is a fantasy series, but let's Let's read the back. Two sisters, one brutal murder, a quest for vengeance that will unleash hell itself, and I'm intoxicating, nope, and an intoxicating romance. Amelia and her twin sister, Vittoria, are witches. It's just another word, but I don't know how to pronounce that. Witches who live secretly among humans, avoiding notice and persecution. One night, Vittoria misses dinner service at the family's renowned restaurant in Sicily. Amelia soon finds the body of her beloved twin, desecrated beyond belief. Whoa. Devastated, Amelia sets out to find her sister's killer and to seek vengeance at any cost, even if it means using dark magic that has been long forbidden. Then Amelia meets Wrath, one of the wicked who are princes of hell she has been warned against in tales since she was a child. Wrath claims to be on Amelia's side, tasked by his master with solving a series of women's murders on the island, but when it comes to the wicked, nothing is as it seems. I hope the way that I read that was actually good because I feel like I got very monotone in the middle of that and I can't listen to a monotone person read. I'm so sorry. We have three more. Three more, that's it, okay? Okay, we're almost done. <sighs> Crescent City by Sarah J. Mouse. I read House of Earth and Blood in like the beginning of last year. Well, maybe not the beginning of January. Like, oh yeah, like March ish, March, April, May, June, May. Let's go with May. And it's a big book, okay? And I loved the ending. I loved the ending so so freaking much but the beginning y'all i was so confused like i don't honestly believe that i could tell you what this book was about well it's about bryce who is half human half fae they're called something i thought but i don't know she's half human half fae and she lives in a world where there's fae there's werewolves there's sprites there's just a very fan fantasy fantastical world okay i i'll, I'll 
I'll read the back, okay? Half Faye, half human, Bryce Quinlan loves her life. Every night is a party and Bryce is going to savor all the pleasures Lunathian, also known as Crescent City, has to offer. But then a brutal murder shakes the very foundations of the city and Bryce's world comes crashing down. Two years later, Bryce still haunts the city's most notorious nightclubs, seeking only oblivion, oblivion now. Trying to put the past behind her, when the murderer attacks again and an infamous fallen angel, Hunt Athelar, <laughs> is assigned to watch her very... Mm -mm. her every footstep bryce knows she can't forget any longer as bryce and hunt fight to unravel the mystery the threads they tug ripple through the underbelly of the city across warring continents and down to the deepest levels of the hell of hell of the hell where things that have been sleeping for millennia are beginning to stir so it's kind of like a murder mystery. It is fantasy. There is a subplot of live. It's just the beginning. There's just so, literally so much that is introduced. It's very hard to like keep track of. But anyway, anyway, I, ne I need to read the second one. I need to read House of Sky and Breath. So I'm going to actually reread this in February because I was so confused here. I don't want to be confused in that one. So I just need to like refresh my memory. So I'm going to reread this in February and then read the second one. Hopefully. Okay. These last two are YA series. Let's start with, let's start with this one. Harry Potter. I've never read Harry Potter before. Well, okay. I read books one, two, and three last year and I was bored. How did kids read these? I was bored. But everyone is saying from here on out, it gets really good. So I'm actually reading Doblet of Fire this week, but did, no, how, how are middle schoolers reading this? Can you tell that I was not a reader as a child? How are, this is 750 pages and kids read this? So yeah, the sheer size of it has freaked me out and the rest of them are that big. So that's why I haven't finished it, but it is my goal to finish Harry Potter this year. Okay. And last one, and this is just for nostalgia feels, okay? I want to reread the Percy Jackson series. I have read this probably three times in my life, which doesn't really sound like that much, but I'm just so obsessed with these books. It is Greek mythology. You follow Percy Jackson, who is a half-blood, which means he is like half-human, half Greek god. He doesn't really know who his father is. And he's kind of trying to figure that out in the book. What else happens? What else happens in book one? Like I feel like I just know the entire series at this point. Like I don't know specifically what happens in each book. He starts going to Camp Half-Blood, which is just a bunch of where the children of Greek gods go. And they like train and they do fun things and cool stuff and go on quests and all of this stuff. And in this one, Zeus's lightning bolt is stolen and Percy and his friends take it upon themselves to find out who stole the lightning bolt. And yeah, I just, I just love this series so much. And if you have not read this series, I just highly, highly, highly recommend it. They're very easy reads. It is just so much fun. It's YA. It's I just love them and I got the new covers last year so I, I have to read them. I'm so excited. Oh, okay beautiful humans. That is all of the series that I want to finish in 2023. <sighs> That's a lot. Do you know that? That's a lot. When I was sitting down the other day and like writing out all of the series that I wanted to finish and like how many books were in each series, it was around like 50 books and my reading goal this year is 150 and the fact that 50 of them are just series and that's not even all of the series that I have like I really want to read the Zodiac Academy this year and that's like eight or nine books. I really want to read The Cruel Prince this year. I really want to read Shadow and Bone trilogy like there's so many more that I want to read but then I also have so many romance books and thrillers that I want to read as well. So it's just kind of hard keeping that balance. So I'm starting with these ones that I just talked to you about today and then we'll add on more if I feel like I can. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I still can't believe that this is like my third video and I'm like keeping up with it. I'm very, very proud of myself if I do say so myself. Okay. Bye, beautiful humans.